Hey guys, who got to check the hair? Happy Monday. <clears throat> All right, my screen just flashed, which is usually my sign that everything's working good and that I am live. Come on in. Join me for some inky fun tonight. Whew, it's been a night. I almost was late. Oh my gosh, I'm never late. Oh, I would, don't know how I would handle that. But I am here and it's time to do some stamping. Super excited to stamp with you guys tonight. I see some of you popping on here. Um, as you come on, make sure to tell me hello and um, where you're watching from. One of my favorite things to do um, every live event is to go through after the event and read where everyone's watching from. That's like the highlight of my night after I'm done. Um, usually when I'm done stamping, I clean up my mess sometimes and then I head down to watch The Bachelor, which I have recorded. And as I'm watching The Bachelor in the background, I'm usually going through and reading everyone's notes. Okay, Kathy says she can't hear. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to have to. Um, can anyone else not hear me? I see other people hopping on, but Kathy says she can't hear. And I don't know if that's just Kathy or if that is on my end. Okay, great. Robin says she can hear me. Okay, Kathy, I think it's something on your end. Hi, Kay. Welcome. Welcome, Joanne. Thanks for joining. And okay, good. Joanne says it's good. Thank you so much for the feedback, ladies. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh, it's always nerve wracking when you're in the middle of these technology things and it's like, ah, it's not working the way I thought. So thank you so much. Hi, Carol. Welcome. Hi, Kay. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Robin. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I think you are going to love what I have in store for you tonight. I had four cards, but I don't know if we're going to have time to get to four. So I think I'm going to save one of them for next week. Um, I have three of them cut. If we have time, we'll see how this goes. But I'm also rolling out my new February class to go tonight. I'm so excited. So I just shipped off my Dragonfly Garden class to go for January, um, a little over a week ago now, I think. Yeah, that would have been about right. And um, I am rolling out my new class tonight and you are gonna absolutely love it. I'm super, super excited for it. Um, so I've got the link to order that class up in my description. Um, and again, I so, so, so appreciate um, all of you sharing my video because I love to creatively inspire people. So as you pop on and say hello, I also would love it if you hit that share button down there and share this video on your timeline with your friends. I give away prizes and always the best prizes are given away for the shares. So um, sharing the video is really where it's at. And Facebook changed their privacy settings. So after you share, if you wouldn't mind commenting shared, I would so appreciate that because I can't always see who actually shared the video. And I wanna get you into my prize drawing. So, okay. <clears throat> For those who don't know me, my name is Rose Grunewald. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And tonight is my Make It Monday live stamp event. I am stamping with you tonight from my fabulous stamping studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. I've got three beautiful projects featuring the Forever and Always bundle that I'm super excited to share with you. 
Hi, Sharon. Thanks for sharing. I got two Sharons in a row that shared. Um, I'm also rolling out my February um, class to go. That's a class that um, you get to make all sorts of fun projects, and I'll share some details about that here shortly. Um, let's see here. And I also have prizes for last week's class. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. So I think we should talk about prizes first. What do you say? Prizes? I think prizes would be good. All right. So you might remember that last week we made a whole bunch of cards using all of that pretty paper that you get for free in when you sign up as a discount shopper. Don't mind me, I'm just refreshing and grabbing the cards I made last week. So we use the Punch Party um, bundle or stamp set and we made this pretty card. And then I sh actually, yes, I showed you the other card I made using Coastal Cabana. And then using that pretty paper and the punch pack, we also made these gorgeous cards with a really simple layout, but we combined all sorts of different colors. The um, promo that Stamping Up has, Stampin' Up has going on to get the five free packs of paper ends at the end of this month. So if that's something you're interested in, you don't wanna wait um, to snag that deal. And then um, we also made, you might remember these adorable baby cards with the soft colors from the Subtles pack. And these cards, all four of them, is what I'm giving away for the likes and comments. So um, whenever you like or comment, you are entered to win a prize. That's the prize I'm giving away, all four of these cards. So the winner of this four card set is Patricia Estrada. Congratulations, Patricia. <clears throat> I um, don't have your address. So if you wouldn't mind sending me um, an email or a private message with your address, I will get those in the mail to you. I'm a little bit behind on getting last week's prizes in the mail, but I'm thinking they will go out tomorrow with those other prizes. It got to be a super hectic week. So thank you, Joanne. Oh, hi, Debbie. Hi, Doris. Welcome. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> All right, next for the shares. Um, so as I do my classes to go, they're actually very similar to the prize I'm giving away now. I have, I think I only have two of these left. Um, I've got this card kit. I used the celebration stamp set called A Touch of Ink to design this card right here. It's always backwards when I'm in my um, video to design this card. And I've left it pretty um, simple, no fuss, no muss for the um, beginner stamper so that any stamper at any level could put together this card. There are um, supplies here to make four cards and you can swap out whatever stamp set you have that you like for this circle that's punched out in this kit if you don't have this stamp set. And if you are a veteran stamper who's been stamping for a while, you'll know how to bling this card up and um, make it your style. So that's the prize for our shares and the winner is Arliss Knoop. Um, I don't know if the K is silence. Noop, canoop. Congratulations, Arliss. Thank you for sharing my video. Um, I need your address as well. So if you would send me an email at countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com or um, a private message, that would be great. And I will get that off in the mail to you. So I think we should flip the camera around and get to stamping. Okay. I'm also excited to tell you that I have a new tabletop coming. I've been watching back my videos and I noticed that um, it's a little bit dark to the stamping 
Oh, I got to plug in my phone so I don't lose you guys here. Um, this tabletop is a little dark and it's kind of hard to see what I'm stamping on it. So I'm going to try and lighten it up and I think I'll be getting a new tabletop that will be easier to see this week. So super excited for that. All right. Let's talk about our projects tonight. I am stamping with the Forever and Always bundle. So this is a stamp set and dies that is in our spring mini catalog. You can find it on page 10. It's part of this huge Love You Always suite. So all of these products coordinate and we're using this stamp set tonight. Here. Um, all right. So I want to talk a little bit about my February class to go and what is all included in that. So in my class, you'll get, you have a couple options. You will get a half a pack of the True Love Designer Series paper. And I've got all the pretty designs for that. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see this a little bit better. There we go. So you can see all the beautiful designs. This paper is black and white. If you are someone who likes to use your stamp and blends, um, it is perfect for that. And I'm going to show you some ideas for that tonight. If you're someone who's not a colorer, that's okay because it is beautiful without coloring. And I'm showing you some of that tonight. Um, it's also perfect for sponging. And there are new blender brushes in our spring catalog. When you order my February class to go, you will get one of the new blending brushes included in your kit so you can try it out. Um, and I can tell you that some of the cards in the kit use the blending brush. Uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And the cool thing about these blending brushes is you can reuse them. You can rinse them out and reuse them and they work really, really great. All right, now with the kit, you'll get everything cut and um, punched and um, stuffed in envelopes to make 12 cards. You'll make two each of six designs. And you also will get a pack of the snail mail twine combo pack. There are two rolls of twine in here and a package of opal rounds in your kit. So, all sorts of goodies here. Oops, I almost grabbed one of the cards from the kit and spoiled it for you. So all of this stuff, you've got your kit and then your option to add on the bundle. So super, super exciting. And let me tell you, the cards in it are beautiful. I know that you will absolutely love them. So let me move my stuff out of the way. Let's make our first card. What do you say, huh? Okay. Hi, Marge. Welcome. Thanks for watching tonight. <clears throat> All right. So I want to know while I'm getting set up here, how was everyone's weekend? Did you guys do anything fun? I was in my stamp room actually all weekend. So let me get my notes for card sizes here as they get a little organized. Okay. So um, I'd love for you to post what you did this weekend in the comments. If you had a great weekend, I want to read those while I stamp to keep me company here. All right. We are starting with a card base, um, basic black. And this is just a half a sheet of cardstock, so it's five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm gonna fold this in half and get our card base good to go here. All right. Now we've also got a couple pieces of this designer series paper. You know what? Let's stamp the inside first. So I'm gonna grab. Kind of get that out of the way. Grab my blushing bride, but I have to find it here. Blushing bride, and I'm going 
going to stamp this pretty flower. I'm using this large flower from the stamp set. Ooh, Sharon watched it snow. Did you get very much snow where you are? I gotta tell you, it was super cozy to be up here in my stamp room. Um, I have an absolutely gorgeous view out into a field behind us, our yard and a field. And it was really cozy kind of watching it snow and being all snug and warm up here in my room. I really enjoyed that. I'm just stamping this kind of off the edge of the paper. The image of these flowers is just absolutely stunning. The detail is so gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And that's just the inside of our card. All right, let's glue this right away on the inside. I saw some people in a Facebook group talking about how they really have a hard time with our stamp and seal. And I thought, huh, how can you not hear the angels singing <laughs> when I am going through my lives? Oh my goodness. I can hear that I'm getting a phone call on my phone. I hope that it is not interrupting our broadcast. All right, so we are just going to glue this to the inside of a card here. And now for our front, this is going to be a pretty simple card. We have got uh, a couple layers of designer series paper. I'm using two, so these are double sided. You could use either side, whichever um, patterns you like. I'm gonna use these flowers and then these like little diamonds kind of on here. So this piece is five and a quarter uh, by four. And I'm gonna glue that down to my card base. like so. And I just realized that oops, helps to get that centered, huh? I stuck her down a little too soon. There we go. I just realized I did not cut one of the pieces. So we're going to have to do that here quick. Um, let's see, I need a strip of coordinating paper. Let's see, I think that I will use, I have this one, I gotta find it here, I've got a, um, here we go. This is the one I'm looking for. <clears throat> All right. And this I'm doing at a half an inch. By four and a quarter. Oh yes, Doris, sympathy and pet loss cards are just, you hate that you need to use them, but we do. So, so nice to get that. All right, this is a strip that's a half an inch by four and a quarter, and that's just gonna go across the center of our card like this. Let's try and center that up here. <laughs> Arliss is coming on late. Arliss, you won my prize for sharing uh, tonight, and I need your address. So, 
would you get a minute if you could send me a private message? Um, to let me know. Sandy says, love this set. Oh, Sandy, this is a beautiful, beautiful set. I absolutely am in love with the detail and it's gonna be so perfect for so many different occasions. All right, next we've got a layer of basic black. And this one is, um, it's four and a half by three and a quarter. And then I've got another piece of the designer series paper here that's four and a quarter by three. So it's a quarter inch smaller on both sides than the basic black layer. And we're gonna glue those together. So um, everything that I am using on this card, you'll have all the supplies to make with the exception of a punch you will have all the supplies to make in the card kit in my February class to go. So with your leftover paper, you could make this card, all your leftover supplies. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here. Um, remember our snail mail twine combo pack comes with two uh, twines in it, uh, a white and a blushing bride, and we're gonna use the blushing bride. And I'm going to wrap that around this layer here twice. And then we will um, tie it in a bow. So I'll just wrap that around twice and then I'm going to tie it. And remember, we're tying a thin twine here. So because I don't have the kind of husband who is going to come up here and hold my knots down, I have a little trick for you that I have learned. I always like to tie these in a knot first to keep that nice and secure as I tie the rest of the bow. There we go. And then that will kind of hold it in place so you don't have to worry about holding your finger down as you tie. And you can make a nice bow this way. All right, trim these ends. You guys know the drill. I gotta have ribbon or twine or something on like every single one of my cards. Let's zoom in here so you can see. Isn't that beautiful? Just absolutely gorgeous. All right. Next, I've got a scrap of Blushing Bride here. And I have my Label Me Lovely punch. And I'm just gonna punch a piece of this out. And we've got this. In here, there are all sorts of sentiments that go with our love and our always. So you can do love you so very much, love you, love you more, always together, um, love you with my whole heart, forever and always, love you forever and always with love and I'm going to do with love as my combination. Now I've got a sample card over here that I'll show you when I'm done that uses a couple different patterns but as I was um, kind of designing my card for tonight I realized that this process goes a little bit better when we stamp our with first. So that's what I'm going to do. Grab my memento pad here. Okay. And then I'm kind of lining that up so that it's not too close to the edge. It's straight. Like that. And Trust me, this just works so much better when I have that lined up first. 
And I'm going to grab the pretty cursive love sentiment and we're going to stamp that next. All right, and I am just going to tuck this love right in here. I'm not really worried if this is perfectly straight or not because it's a cursive kind of fun font. Go stuck to there a little bit. <clears throat> so we've got our sentiment with love on here. And I felt like this needed just a little jazzing up. So I'm coming in with my Blushing Bride ink and this gorgeous flower again. And we're going to come in right. This is one of my favorite things to do, by the way, when I've got a punch or a die cut image. I like to come in here and kind of stamp a little background image. And this is a little color on color. And it really jazzes up that punch. Let's show you here. See how that jazzes it up with just the right amount of detail? <clears throat> Ooh, Marge did some stamping this weekend. I totally stamped all weekend. I also transferred over my blog platform, and that was a lot of work. All right, now we are ready to put our layers together. I am going to kind of line this up because I want this ribbon in the center of our strip and that looks about right. Let's get some dimensionals. And then we will get this on the card front. Didn't do such a good job of layering that. <laughs> Let's try this again. There we go. And then we're going to pop up our punch as well. Lisa says that looks pretty. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really like that sentiment with this punch. In fact, I think that's the combo for the next card too. Can't remember what order I have my stack of boxes in to stamp with you guys. All right, now we're gonna tuck this in here by our bow with love. All right, our first card is done. Now it's pretty darn simple and we've got black and white with just a pop of color. And let me show you actually my design card, my sample. So I wrapped the twine around three times on that card and I think maybe you'd wanna wrap it three times because it's got a little bit kind of wider band here, you can see that color a little bit more. And you can see we've got kind of two different designs here, but they're both absolutely beautiful. So I love how simple that was to make such a pretty elegant card. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Rhonda. Thanks, Sharon and Joanne. I so appreciate it. Um, oh, you know what we didn't do? I don't bling either of these up. We've got these beautiful opal rounds we should use. So let's put some sparkle on here with our opal rounds. Okay, one here. Put one down here. You know how I like to feel the flow of the cards and kind of place my embellishments that way. And we can do the same here. There's a little less room down here, so I'll put one down here. And then I'll put two up here. All 
definitely adds uh, a little sparkle to it. Aren't those beautiful? So there are our first cards of the night. What do you think? You love them? All right, let me get a little bit of cleaned up here. So that we are ready to stamp our next card. I think I'm using some of these same stamps for the next one. I can't remember. Oh my goodness. That's how much time I spent in here that it's hard for me to remember what's in my projects. Isn't that funny? Okay, so next. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> I always make you guys wait with my design card. All right. For this card, we are using, in the suite, there is another coordinating paper here. I'm gonna show you. This absolutely gorgeous, love you always specialty designer series paper, just beautiful. Spoiler alert, some of our cards, some of the cards in the class include that paper. So you'll get a chance to kind of see it for yourself in person, but this paper is absolutely stunning. Look at how that shines and shimmers. That one's um, kind of Blushing Bride. And then this one, I'm going to pull this out so you can see it is a Rococo Rose. That's the color we're using on the card we're about to make. It's like metallic-y and the cut on this paper is so smooth. I was shocked when I cut it in my trimmer how absolutely smooth it was, which is nice because with the paper this beautiful, you don't want any rough edges and it cuts it really sharp and straight and smooth and perfect. Um, the Stampin' Up trimmer, that is. That's the one that I use. So isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. You can see them together. They're just absolutely stunning. All right. So, all right, for this card, that's a scrap for punching here. I've got, let me look at my notes so I can remember the sizes. We've got a piece of Sahara sand and this is my normal card base, right? Five and a half by eight and a half. And we fold this over at four and a quarter. And then I've got a strip of the designer series paper from our True Love designer series paper stamp set. And this one is one and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches long. And then I've got a piece of Rococo Rose. That's the color that's kind of in the background here. Um, and that piece is, let me look at my notes, four and three quarters by three and a half. And then this beautiful designer series paper is an eighth of an inch smaller. So it's four and five eighths by three and three eighths. Now, this card that I'm about to make is super easy, but it is so stunning. The colors absolutely pop on this. You are gonna love it. So as I was making cards, I noticed that the Sahara sand looks so sharp with this black and white paper. Um, so that's a little tip for you. Um, for a pop, absolutely eye-catching layers, consider Sahara sand with this black and white paper. It is so eye-catching. The colors just go together really, really well. See that? You wouldn't think so, but it's amazing. 
Okay, and I am going to now adhere <clears throat> my pretty foil paper to my Rococo Rose layer. And this we're gonna have to be real careful because there is a very slim border or matting around this layer. Okay, and now I've got my white. You could also use Blushing Bride if you wanted a softer color, but I'm gonna go, let me see here. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the white. I'm gonna go with the white and try and bring out the white that's in this black and white paper. Okay, we're gonna wrap this around. Just like we did our last card, we're gonna wrap it around twice. And we're going to do our little tying trick. Now, for those of you who are beginner stampers, these layouts are absolutely wonderful to get your feet wet into stamping because we let our pretty paper do all the work for us. And we just use the colors that coordinate with it. You get a layout like this that works with so many patterns. And it's super easy to design really pretty cards then. So the design process is quite a bit easier when we do it this way and kind of use the same basic layout for a couple different cards and colors and patterns. Sharon loves the paper. I love it too. I actually um, have been focusing on so many other projects that I've been making for you guys in my other classes that I have not really played with it very much. So yeah, anyway. I was happy to get to play with it this weekend. Okay, now let's grab my Rococo Rose. We're gonna use our same punch, Label Me Lovely. And this one I'm gonna do a little bit different. Let me grab my love sentiment so we're doing that in black again love I'm going to do this at an angle like this because I want some room down oh gosh I'm like stamping off the screen sorry guys I want some room down in the corner and grabbing my U. I think that using this stamp set is a wonderful way to send love to our friends and family. And honestly, we could use a little bit of that these days, don't you think? Okay. So now my sentiment says, love you. And we're going to do the same trick we did on our last one, adding that stamped flower image for a little bit of, I just want to see how dark this is. It's pretty dark. Okay. I'm going to stamp off before I stamp it. And now we will stamp it right here. we go. So we've got our flower in the background of our punch. Show you that close up. Whoops. You can see that. Sharon says, I agree. We need all the love we can get. Don't we these days? Oh my goodness. It's just so much going on and I think it is um, probably more appreciated than ever when um, 
we send someone a hand stamped card. I am looking for a marker and I cannot find it, so I will use my black here. I'm going to do a little ink spritzing here, very light, diagonal across my card base. Bring out some of that black. So we got the twine bringing out the white, our spritz bringing out the black. See how light that is? Just a light effect. And we will get our dimensionals and start putting this puppy together, huh? Okay. Go. So got that layer, and now we're going to do the same just like we did on the other card. Pop this up as well. Got dimensionals flying everywhere. Okay. And I'm going to center that just like so. Here we go. Isn't that beautiful? We got to have our bling. Let's put on some of our opals on here, on here, one, whoops, on here, there. Gorgeous, huh? So this is the Rococo Rose foil paper. What do you think? Our next card is done. Oh my gosh, this keeps, I keep going off the screen. I'm so sorry. I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit there. There we go. So there is our next card. And I want to show you that I also made this one with the Blushing Bride. So you can see kind of both colors in action here. And what's interesting is how similar this layout is to my first cards, but it's like a totally different look, don't you think? So this layout, um, when I made this one, inspired me to make this one. And we're letting the paper do the work. It turned out, I think, so, so, so beautiful. All right, so that's card number two. Okay, our next card is a bit more complicated than some of our simple stamping that we warmed up with. I'm going to clean some of the stuff, get it out of the way. So we've got room to do this. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love my chamois. Oh. This is maybe my favorite thing I ever bought from Stampin' Up. Well, maybe not my favorite, but I sure love it. It is apps. Oh, I still need this one. Um, absolutely amazing. All right. Just getting some of this stuff put away so that we don't have so much stuff all over. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to show you a little something that we can do with this designer series paper. So let me grab, I need to get a scrap out of here. I forgot to grab my scrap to show you this. Okay. 
these elements would be so, so, so easy to color with our blends. And um, color with our blends and fussy cut. But so let me show you that for a minute here. Um, we could, I'm just going to grab a couple markers here. We could do the typical thing that people are going to want to do with their blends and come in, I'm using Petal Pink and, you know, come in with some dark shades. And then we could come back in with our light shades and blend. And we can color all these flowers in and have a good old time and use, you know, whatever colors we want, right? So um, definitely can color in our flowers. But one thing you can also do is color in your negative space. And I'm going to show you a little trick for that. So I've got my blends here, light and dark crumb cake. And I'm gonna take the fine point of my dark crumb cake and just show you that we can go around the outside of our image. And outline. Okay. Hi, Noelle. Welcome. Noelle is my niece's middle name. I love that name. <clears throat> All right, now we've got our light uh, crumb cake in here. And I am going to come in and actually I'm going to use, I've got the wrong tip. I'm going to use my brush tip. And I need to order new blends because this one is well loved and used a lot. And I'm just going to come in and color in the space. This is a little bit frayed, this end is. So I'm going to use the other end just to give you an idea here. And then we can blend that darker outline towards the negative space like so. So do you see how we just color in here? Kind of grab that color and feather it towards our light. And you get a beautiful shaded, beautiful shaded look in that negative space. Now, I didn't want you to have to watch me color an entire sheet of this. So I did that ahead of time. But look at how absolutely gorgeous that turned out. Isn't that beautiful with the shading? It really, really, really makes those flowers pop. And we're going to use this in our next card. OK. So I've got more Sahara sand. So I know this is crumb cake, but I've got a Sahara sand base. You also could use a crumb cake base if you like. I've got a strip of basic black, and this is 3 quarters of an inch wide. Um, the length doesn't really matter because we're just we're going to cut it off and you'll see that shortly here. <laughs> and then I've got um, a piece of designer series paper, one that has more of a black background with a pop of white is what I'm using here. And this is four inches by five and a quarter. Now this card is going to be a tall card, so it's four and a quarter by 11. And I always score it here at five and a half. When you're making a tall card, you definitely want to score your card because the grain of your paper runs this way. So when we're folding a card that way, it's going with the grain and you get a nice crisp fold. 
But when you're folding against the grain, you have a tendency to get rough edges here if you don't score the card and break that grain. Robin asks, what color was the Stampin' Blend? Robin, these uh, for this one is light and dark crumb cake is what I used on it. <clears throat> Good question. <clears throat> okay, so this strip of colored paper is three inches by five and a half inches. And we are gonna start putting our card together. Nope, we're not gonna do that yet. All right, I've also got a scrap of Sahara sand here and I haven't done very much die cutting yet, but I'm gonna show you something unique that you can do with these dies. So listen, we all know that we can grab the love and the always and make these beautiful words. But I wanna give you an idea of something else to do with this flower outline. So let me grab, I'm gonna cut this piece off just to make this easier. <clears throat> All right, let me grab my baby boss. Isn't he cute? Oh my gosh. He's smaller than my purse. And I have to tell you, if I was driving around with this baby boss with me all the time, I would have a whole lot more fun than when I'm driving around with my purse. So, grab my cute little cutting plates. These things are so darn adorable. Oh my gosh. Okay. And I'm not stamping first. I'm just going to cut the image first. We're using photopolymer stamps. So we'll be able to stamp the image just fine after this is cut. Run this through my baby boss. Listen, if you want to get your hands on this baby boss, it's like 60 bucks only. And um, it is a great, great, great addition to your um, discount shopper kit. And you could still pick $65 worth of other products and get your five free packs of paper. It's a really great deal. Okay. So I used the, I just want to show you on the dies again, the, the die I'm using is the big flower, this large flower. And I have not rearranged my dies from the way they came from Stampin' Up. It's this one down here. Okay. Now, I lost my, here we go. Okay, I do not remember if I cleaned off the stamp set, so let's do that again. I think I did, because I raved about how amazing the chamois was. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my Sahara sand, so we're doing a little color on color stamping. And ink up this flower. Now I should warn you, my Sahara sand needs a little re-inking. So the color is probably going to be a little bit lighter with my first shot here than it will be if you do this at home. If you do it at home, you may stamp off to get the same tone that I'm getting right now. I'm just lining this up, photopolymer, I can see right through that stamp. And we stamped that flower right on there. Sorry, my finger is making a shadow. <clears throat> okay, so next, we're gonna grab our love. And instead of using a punch or the die cut that matches the love word, I'm going to use this pretty flower as my background. So stamp that on there. 
Now, isn't that a unique way to use our flower dye? And you can see the petals and the detail on the flower behind it. All right, now let's get to putting our card together. What do you say? Oh my gosh, I almost lost this. <clears throat> Some snowmobilers are going past our house right now in the back field behind us and it distracted me. I had to see what that commotion was. All right, <clears throat> so we are going to adhere our layer to our card base. You know we got a lot of snow and we got some snowmobilers going by now. The trail goes through the field right behind our house. I think that I told you that this layer was four by five and a quarter, but it is not. It's actually three and a quarter by five. So um, for those of you who are like, my layer isn't right. Yeah, it's not, it's different, so. All right, and then I want to take my, next we're going to layer our colored sheet here. Uh, the one thing to note is when you color on the blends, it does bleed through to the other side. So you're not going to be able to kind of double side your designer series paper if you've colored on it with blends. Okay, gluing this down I'm in the middle here. And the cool thing about this size of paper is you wouldn't have to put it right in the middle. You could put it kind of offset and it would look really nice too. Sharon says, great idea. Thank you very much. All right, now I've got this strip of basic black because I want to bring out that black some more. And I've got the banners punch. I'm going to use this one that makes a pointy little banner here. So I'm just going to slide that in there. I get a nice pointed end for that. <clears throat> Isn't that amazing how that color just pops like that? Oh my gosh, I love it. And I picked one that didn't have a lot of negative space and you could do the same. Okay, now we're gonna put this on our card and we're gonna be layering this over the top. So I like to kind of look and see, yeah, that looks about right. So let's, I'm always eyeing stuff up before I glue it down. We'll go here. That black sure pops against that Sahara sand, don't you think? And crumb cake, it, it does the same. <clears throat> All right, just trimmed off the end to match up with the outside of the card. And now, <clears throat> You know, I can't have a card without my twine so or ribbon. But I am going to wrap this around. A couple times here. I think I have this a little bit too long. That's all right. Okay. And tie this in a bow. Now I'm not too worried exactly where this is fitting because I'm gonna be able to slide it. We're right around the whole, see how we're right around the whole card front? We're gonna be able to slide that exactly where we need it to go. And let me cut some of this off because this is way too long. 
tie this in a bow. I want to know who is going to, when they get this designer series paper, if you already have it or if you're getting it, I want to know who is going to run out and now color in that negative space like we did here. Didn't it turn out just like amazing? Okay. Trim and trim. And dimensionals. We're going to pop this up. Okay, we're going to tuck it right here by our bow. Just like that. You liking that so far? We need a little bling. Let's grab our bling. I'll go here. I'll go here. And here, there we go. I actually don't have a design card for this one. This was a little bit of stamping on the fly tonight. <clears throat> so what do you think? Do you love that? Oh, very classy. Thank you so much. I see that Vicky's going to try it. And Doris is going to try it. Kay loves it. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It makes my heart happy to know that you enjoy my projects. All right. So here are our beautiful cards from tonight. Got a lot of fun layering going on. Absolutely gorgeous cards. Um, with some simple layouts and pretty paper. <laughs> if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would be so thrilled to earn your business. Um, you can shop my online store. I need to update this, but this link will still take you to my blog. You also can go to rosegrunewald.com and you'll see some links to shop my online store. When you are placing your order, if your order is under $150, I appreciate if you use my host code. This is my host code for February, 7FMR3YMF. If your order is over $150, though, you should skip that code. So this is what helps me to get host rewards so I can make card kits for your prizes and stuff like that. Um, but if your order is over 150, you'll qualify to get your own host rewards and I'll still send you a stamped thank you card um, <clears throat> with your order. Also, just a reminder that on my blog is the order form for the Always Forever and Always Bundle card kit class and almost everything you see here is included in the class, not this special foil paper and obviously not the punch, but like you can see that you can use that die cut and get a very similar image. You'll be able to make um, most of these cards with what you have from my card kit. So um, awesome stuff. All right. I let me transfer this over. I'm done stamping with you guys for the evening. Thanks for joining me. I had a lot of fun. Um, make sure to stop by again next Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for more creative inspiration using all sorts of goodies. 
I will be going to catch up on The Bachelor now. And I hope the rest that all of you have a great rest of your evening. I will be seeing you all soon. Bye.